Hey guys, so as I promised, I'm going to start that 30-day uh, challenge with the vocabulary today. So, for this first day, I decided to take a line from the sax player Melissa Aldana, and she's nasty. I haven't heard much of her, but I really like what she does, and I'm taking this, there's this video that was posted by Elite Music Mentor, I'll post it in the description, and the line starts at about uh, like 2.15, 2.16 at the top of the course, it's a blues, they're playing uh, Billy's Bounce, and her whole solo is ridiculous, that's why I almost feel like it, it's a disservice to even just take one line from this, but I'm sure I'll look at more of this on my own time, and also, uh, she's playing with Lage Lund here, and he does some great stuff too, so maybe on another day, maybe I'll take something from his solo, um, but for now we're focusing on her, so I'm going to play the line first, just so you know. I'm going to start it here about a chorus before, and you'll see at the end of this chorus she leaves some space, and then the line I'm talking about is pretty much the first four bars of the top of the next chorus, so I'll point it out. So, here's the top. Here's the line. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do, I'll play it again first real quick, uh, I'll try to match it with her, I hope I get it correct, but if not, I'll do it again, and I'll do it slowly, um, so, here's the line. Okay, so we're going to break that down and I'll also show you a little variation that I made and everything. So, this is like I said, it's the first four measures of a blues in F. And the part that I really want to sort of draw from, the part that intrigued me, is literally the very end of it when she kind of plays this ascending triad. Um, Okay, which is a B major triad. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about the rest, but that's really the point that I want to focus on. Um, so, before she does that, though, like I said, she's really just thinking, I think, F for the first four measures, which is what you can do, obviously, in a blues. You're thinking of the one chord. And, you know, people always talk about triads and keeping it simple with triads. She's not just playing the straight up triads, but you can see how her ideas to begin with resolve or revolve around triads. So she starts and she starts on the end of one, um, picking up on the fifth of an F major triad. Okay? That's pretty much just F major triad minus that. It's going down to five, three, two, one, but there's your F major triad. One. Okay? Then she kinda continues stating F or more so F major seven here by doing this. Okay, and that's the second measure, and that's actually interesting because even though like you think of the tonic chord, the one in a blues in this case is like a one seven, like a dominant seven, but here she's playing the major seven, so she's kind of pulling from the major scale, which is totally cool. And because she's going to be approaching a dominant sound, it's interesting how she switches it up. So this line in the second measure. I mean, starting with some chromaticism, but she's starting on a chord tone there. I kind of just see that as just straight up like vocabulary that you can play over a major chord. Okay, so so far, really just F major. But then when she gets here, measure three, she goes up a A half diminished arpeggio, which is obviously related to F7, where F7, which is in the key of uh, B flat major, there, uh, the A half diminished is the seventh right there, the seventh chord. It's just up a diatonic third from the F7. So that's basically stating F7. So like I said, she went from a major sound because of that note, then to that sound, the dominant. Then what she does is, again, this very almost cliche bebop. Those notes almost signify to me the four chord, the B flat major. Which is interesting, because again, not that she's 
thinking this exactly, but it's almost like she's thinking of going from F major to F major 7 to F7 uh, to B flat 7 or like B flat. So she's almost like cycling through fourths. But you don't have to worry about this stuff. She's really just thinking F major. It's just great jazz lines that she's playing. Um, then she, what she's doing... Then she's continuing it. She's going back to the chord tone there. That's the seventh of F dominant seven. Then from what she's doing here, she's sliding into this. Now once she's here, she's going up that B major triad. So that's really what I want to talk about, okay? Because that's what's interesting to me. I think that's what makes the line sound cool. I mean, the rest of it's cool too. But basically, okay, so most of us should probably know that B major is, not only is it the tritone in relationship to F7, B is a tritone away, and we know about tritone substitution, so it kind of makes sense there. But it also is interesting because it's like a chromatic, like sort of passing chord or harmony that would be approaching what you're going to, which in this case, the four chord in measure five, which is B flat seven. So it kind of works there as well. So it's interesting because the tritone, like we know that tritone substitution makes sense. That's not necessarily anything new, but um, it's really cool because compared to that F sound, it's like the opposite end of the spectrum. So it kind of gives it an out sound but it still makes sense, and it also makes sense because of where it's approaching. But even putting all that aside, I think the thing that makes this the most interesting to sort of pull a concept from, because again, tritone substitution is not necessarily anything new to me, nor is approaching a chord from a uh, passing or a, a, a half step above, but it's the way that it's phrased, and it's the way that she leaves the line off at that point. When she's up the B major triad, she cuts it off. Now, a second later, she answers it by actually going down the same triad of B major. She goes, uh, that's what she does. She goes, something like that. Um, so she's still kind of implying that chord over the B flat 7 there. But I think that that's really cool. Because not that there's anything wrong with, like, if I were to play a B major triad and then immediately going into some B flat 7 idea, which is where you expect it to go. But... The rhythm section is sort of taking care of leading her ear there, but as far as her lead playing is going, to me, it's really cool that it, the line ends on this tritone substitution triad, because it's tritone substitution, but it still kind of gives it an out sound, and when you have a line that sounds very diatonic, and then you leave it, like, in an out kind of way, and then cut it off, I think, personally, that's what's making it sound cool. So I'll play the line again. It's basically... Uh, you know, and then it goes to that. So it sounds real cool. So to take this concept, I made my own line that would be like the first four measures of a blues where I basically stayed in F and kind of thought triadically, but just keeping it simple, I'll bring it down a little bit, and at the end, I venture off and lead into a B major triad. So my little variation using this concept, I made a line that was like this. You know what I mean? I start with an F major triad, then I turn it into an F augmented, then I'm just kind of staying within the scale using good voice leading. Um, going down F major, then leading back into it with like a C altered sound. That's the only part that kind of is venturing off from F. Then from here, again, F major triad. Then I'll go into B major. You know, so, and you can take it through the rest of the blues through there. So again, my little variation. So basically the concept that I'm pulling from this first day is 
using that major triad, the tritone substitution, but using it in a way where you're phrasing it where it cuts off at the end and then your ear sort of naturally guides you where you think it should go, okay? Because, like I said, if you really broke down what she's doing, it's basically using tritone substitution, but also using a harmony that is approaching what you're going to. That's nothing new, but the way that she phrases it is very intelligent and very good, and she's an amazing sax player, so I think that it's something really cool that you can add to your playing, especially when you're applying it to blues. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you tomorrow.